there are three dogs in the family home, all Labradors. One night, the youngest Labrador, Sophie, jumped onto my bed to sleep. It was winter in Scotland and so I welcomed the cozy presence. A few hours later, I was roused by her growling a low steady growl. I then felt a depression on the covers over my chest, and someone sitting on it, as if they had walked to the side of the bed, I was lying on, and decided to plant their arse on my upper body. Sophie continued to growl a few moments longer until I was able to overcome the paralysis. Once the episode ended, she left the room to sleep downstairs, and I just wrote it off as a weird sleep paralysis episode and chilled. I suppose the dog could have been sleeping too, and growled in her dream state, but, my dogs usually do that, sleep bark Labradors do when dreaming, not growling per se. Never felt anything tangible before during sleep paralysis. The depression of the covers felt very real. Just like in the physical world, you can make an enemy on the other side too. I've been plagued by this fuck since I was a kid. My mother had her own ones too, but from what I could gather, half of what she experienced were tame and the other half were fantasy. It all started that one time when I was 13, and my sister pissed me off, so I read this dumb book about creating a voodoo doll. I pulled my sister's hair from her comb and tied it around a twig, and I read this stupid incantation. Even as I read it, I cringed. It was so stupid. The kind of stuff that makes you eye roll and switch off. It was stupid. Nothing happened with my sister or this dumb stick doll. But when I came home the next day from school, my mum whopped me across the head and told me she was livid. Her deceased father had been to see her and told her that I was dabbling in things I shouldn't be, and that she'd invited the priest over. I was stunned. She told me that he'd come to visit her, and in clear words, told her that I was dabbling in things that should never be dabbled in. The priest came over that evening, and we all followed him around the house as he blessed it. That night, around 2 a.m., I woke up with a heavy smack on the window. Being on the second floor, and it being, you know, 2 a.m., I was groggy, startled, 13 years old and full of bravado. I pulled the blinds back and two big glowing eyes stared at me. Then the worst sound I've ever heard, even as I write this, I have goosebumps, said my name, in a low, gravelly, sing-song, mimicky way, like it was taking the piss out of me. Those syllables, really emphasized in a way I'll seriously never forget. It was a voice that was threatening me, in a way that was familiar, but also deadly serious. And it could clearly float, either that or it was taunting me from a ladder outside my bedroom. I shit my pants. I ran screaming. So, 30 years later, I have what scientists love to call, recurring sleep paralysis. Those of you who know this, are already having those shivers run up and down your spines. Sleep paralysis is either a succubus or incubus, or if you'd rather a scientific explanation, your mind playing tricks on you. But essentially, it means some scary, invisible mofo thought you were pretty easy prey and stuck to you. Every 1 to 10 weeks, it's so random I can't even give you an average, I get woken up by the same guy, sitting either next to me, on my chest, above me, or touching me. Every single fucking time, I'm instantly awake, I know he's there, and I start saying, no. No. 
and then start screaming my partner's name to wake me. And it's always him. The same guy I first saw through my windows that first night. He just watches me, and part way through some dream, I suddenly become aware of his energy, and that he's watching me, and I get this sense that my body is in trouble, and I snap back, and as I get back, he's there, and he's trying to take control, and the usual struggles over my body happen. I worry that one day I'll lose that battle. Growing up, I would see or hear horror stories of my older sister's sleep paralysis fits. As early as age 8, I recall feeling off in the early mornings or late at night and going to check on my sister. On several occasions, I would walk in on her laying in her bed, on her back, eyes bulging out out of her head as if signaling me for help, her mouth slightly ajar as faint sounds barely escaped her lips. Her fingertips would sometime twitch, but, it wouldn't be more than a few seconds before I'd start screaming for my parents to come rushing into the room. It terrified me, the sight of her like that. She was so helpless and fear plagued her eyes as it would take a few moments before she was able to vocalize anything. Now might be a good time to mention, that I grew up in a somewhat practicing Catholic household. I went to religious education classes, got confirmed, no meat during Lent, that sort of gig. The only one out of my parents' three kids I might add, to be confirmed. Now I say some with practicing because while my mother did her best to drag us to church every Sunday, my father wanted no parts in it as he grew up with my devout, third world grandma who had him attending grade school with the nuns paddling him and whatnot. He was burned out, needless to say. He was and still remains, however, a man of science and reason. When things went bump in the night, my mom was front and center with the rosary, while, my dad laughed and usually debunked whatever mystery there was. Regardless, every time we were scared at night, or if we had bad dreams we couldn't wake ourselves up from, my mom would tell us to pray and that we would wake up fine. I would opt for an Our Father or Hail Mary when it felt warranted. As my sister and I reached our teen years, she unfortunately got involved with drugs. I won't go into too much detail but at its worst, she was utilizing heavy stimulants to support her multiple jobs and full caseload in college. This only exasperated the fits she had. It got to a point where she started sleeping with a crucifix under her pillow. This sounds crazy, I know. Even more so, considering this course of action was being taken by the same person who dropped out of religious education classes for fear her edgy, atheist boyfriend in high school would judge her for it. As an older teen, and then young adult, my parents, or more so my dad rather, after becoming aware of her past addiction, would blame her previous drug abuse for the reason she suffered these episodes, for lack of a better term. He would shrug them off as the mind punishing itself for guilt of personal afflictions our family sustained during the course of her using. Yet still, it always felt more than that. She would report dark figures in her doorway, figures with red eyes that would put pressure on her chest. She would tell me how that laughed at her when she would pray for them to leave. Tears welling in her eyes when she would recall the accounts that took place the night before. She is now older, in a serious relationship with her own family. Years of sobriety under her belt and little to no bad dreams these days, let alone sleep paralysis episodes. And then, it was my turn. I am a mom on the slightly younger side. I have a school-aged kiddo, who still, occasionally, finds his way to my bedroom on those rare nights he has a bad dream. I have a bed in which when closed if you will, is a twin size. When it's expander, it's a bit larger than a queen. I mention this because while I don't move much in my sleep, 
it gets a bit cramped when I awake in the middle of the night to my son trying to squeeze his way in. One night, same as many other nights before, I felt him climb in. We sleep opposite of each other when my bed isn't extended, and per typical 7 year old sleeping behavior, he donkey kicks me throughout the night. Being a light sleeper, I wake up with the slightest whisper. Call it mom instincts I guess. As such, I wake up frequently throughout the night, 8 to 10 times on average due to discomfort or stress, what have you. This night in particular, I had more difficulty than usual staying asleep. As a habit, I check my phone every time I wake up, just to know how much longer I have before my alarm goes off work. On this night, the last time I recall checking the time, it was 3.09 am. I'm a side sleeper and was facing my wall slash sun as he slept. I'm unsure when I woke up or if I ever really was deep asleep when I felt a looming presence behind me. I felt that prickly feeling throughout my body and my mobility being restricted. It's hard to explain it but I felt every fiber of my core telling me that I can't look back. I simply can't. I began having dark thoughts, and, while I couldn't speak out loud, I started praying in my head. I couldn't pray correctly, my words were jumbling and my prayers were out of order and nonsense. I just felt this overwhelming feeling of fear and dread. Whatever it was just felt, evil. Now I've had my fair share growing up with whispers in the night, unexplained shadows and apparitions, impressions on my bed as a kid, you name it. But never have I felt the feeling of a dark entity. What's even more insane is that I could feel my son naturally stirring in his sleep. His legs on mine, I knew I had to be awake. It's been about a couple of months since that happened and I've had smaller episodes since. Two nights ago, I was tossing and turning in my sleep when that dreadful tingling sensation occurred again. I felt something applying slight pressure to my neck, almost like fingers pressing down. Without opening my eyes, I immediately, and mentally, shouted out, my god is stronger, and the feeling went away. It's odd because I have never said these words before and when I said them, without thinking of them beforehand, I felt like I had only seconds to get them out. Before what happened, you might ask. I'm not sure. I also don't care to find out. I've read studies on sleep paralysis. I've also read up on the science behind it as well as the folklore it's been mentioned in for decades on decades. Being a decent combination of both of my parents, I prefer to find rational explanations behind my experiences like my father would, however, I'm never foolish enough to fully trust science and abandon faith either. To summarize, it's terrifying, encompassing, consuming, and morbidly fascinating once it passes. I would like to thank you all for sticking till the end, it does help out a lot. However, if you have enjoyed any of these stories, please go and support the authors through the links below. Also, I would like to mention, if you have any of your own personal stories, you wish to share of course, please send them to my mail, I'd be more than happy to use it in my next video. Anyways, till next time. Faceless. Voiceless.